Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting Resort Tour. Today we are at Baja Mar in Nassau, Bahamas, which is one of the big mega resorts on the island, the other being Atlantis. I'm so excited to check this place out. I'm a big Hyatt loyalist. I have World of Hyatt globalist status, so I'm excited to show you all of the pools, all the cool animals that are around the property, the massive water park that they built. This place is just absolutely gigantic. It took me forever to walk around here and film everything for y'all, so I'm so excited to show you guys everything. So let's get going. And if you like this type of content, please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video. It really helps me out. So I arrived on property from a cruise ship, actually. Upon driving up to the property, I saw the Royal Blue Golf Course, which is the 18-hole Jack Nicholas signature design on property, so it is available if you're staying on property. Though it is pretty expensive for around about $325 per person, plus tip, plus tax, because I do think they also require caddies. The resort actually has three brands within it. The Grand Hyatt, where I'm staying, the Rosewood, which is the ultra-luxurious $1,200 to $1,400 a night tower, and then the SLS, which is geared towards kind of a party-party crowd from Miami. I booked this stay using a category one through seven certificate because Baja Mar is now 25,000 points per night on a non-peak and non-off-peak day. So just keep that in mind, it used to be a little bit cheaper. Prices here have been hovering at least at like $500 a night after taxes and fees. So just keep that in mind before you're booking that. This is a very expensive property before you get there and then it's very expensive once you get there. And you'll see about that in a second. Check-in for my stay was in the East Tower, and I love the check-in desk with the aquarium behind it. really gets me in the mood for my tropical vacation. I arrived really early in the morning, so there was no line for check-in, though I did see lines at the check-in desk really escalate throughout the day. They gave me my room key, which is actually a wristband. It gets me into the water park automatically. Love these at the big resorts now. Makes things really convenient. Headed over to the West Tower where my room was, loved the elevators over here, loved the design, and loved what was inside the elevators, which kind of felt like a splash of water. Now let's show you my room. It's 1034. It was an ocean view. That was an upgrade from what I booked. Just checked in here. Gonna check out everything in the room. So right here as you enter, we got our iron and our fancy robes as well. Brush there, the laundry bag, which I'm gonna steal for sure. Another one right next to the bathroom door with your safe, as well as looks like hair dryer right here. Stuff for small luggage and then some drawers. Let's go check out the bathroom. Got a little sliding door here. Gonna need some privacy for sure. Ooh, nice shower. Got the Grand Hyatt Balmain, which I've seen a couple times over the last couple trips here. Nice rainfall shower for sure. And this slides from the room, giving you privacy, but if you want a nice ocean view, you can do that too. Got a sink. Over here at the sink, we've got one sink. Towel storage down there. Need some body lotion. And then here we got vanity kit and shower cap. Nice little mirror there for makeup. We have some hangers right here, right next to the toilet. All right, let's head into the main bedroom here. Nice little art on the wall. Oh, it looks nice. Definitely looks nice and new and fresh. Nice little coconut art above the wall. Makes you feel like you are actually in the islands, which is great. Cool light fixtures there, kind of like baskets there. Nice big TV. Lots of waters, which I love. A little Dasani. Nice Keurig there. And underneath, got some more drawers. Should have a mini fridge. 
I believe that these are on a sensor, so I gotta be careful there. Probably just gonna charge $45 for that. Is that truly? Yeah, nice stuff there for sure. Oh, and they even have some snacks. I love those rum cakes. Oh man, tempting, but too expensive. Little chair and desk area. Little sitting area as well. Now let's check out the room view. So I did get an ocean view, they said. Always fun figuring out how to open these. Oh, you got a twist. Yeah, here we go. So balcony is not really able to be sat out on. Got a nice ocean view. Now that we've checked out the room and the view, let's go check out the rest of the resort. So out the front of the property, I didn't get a chance to capture this on film, but there's actually a water show that was created by the same people that did the Bellagio fountains, which is pretty incredible and an awesome benefit there. We're gonna walk around the casino, we're gonna walk around some of the grounds, see some of the shops, then check out the pools and then the water park. So walking around the casino portion of the resort, it definitely felt to me like the win Las Vegas, very fancy, very high end, but also use the exact same font as the wind. So that's pretty cool. There's also lots of fancy restaurants surrounding the casino floor. So Cinco, which was a uh, Asian and Latin design down on the ground floor down here, probably has great views of the fountains at night. Went and checked that out. And then rounding out the restaurants on this side, at least near the guest elevators was a really fancy looking piano bar. Everything at this resort in terms of restaurants just seemed like they hired the very best interior designers. This is something that's straight out of the Win Las Vegas, Venetian, any of the high-end five-star properties. Everything there was to the utmost and highest standards. So walking outside back where I came in and was dropped off at the resort, you can see the cool fountains in the background. That reminded me of the Aria Las Vegas. You, of course, have the lions, which bring good luck in certain cultures that are all about the gambling. Gotta have those. Here's that open air rotunda area. And we're gonna take those escalators down a level to actually where the rotunda shops are. So there's a bunch of really high end shops as well as a few restaurants. Those are gonna be surrounding the fountains at night, really great views at night, but it's also where the globalist breakfast actually is. So this resort actually used to have a grand club lounge like many Grand Hyatt's do. But after COVID that shut down, hasn't reopened. I doubt it will reopen. So right now you're getting free breakfast in the Regatta restaurant, which is a massive, massive buffet restaurant. Had a really long line when I walked by in the middle of the breakfast rush. So just keep that in mind. There are a lot of people here at the Baja Mar. You're paying a lot for your room, but there are a lot of people that are also doing so. So in addition to these shops, there's plenty of shops that are surrounding the casino. Those are gonna be more of your Cartier's and your jewelry stores. And then there's some shops near the beach that we'll show you too. You see the fountains that surround the valet area above you. So really cool use of different levels to create a really immersive environment here at Baja Mar. And then down on this level, they have a few more airstreams for some to-go food. They have a pizza place. And then they also have their nightclub bond, which I believe there was actually a bond at the Bellagio in Las Vegas for a while. So that's pretty cool. Another branded experience here on property for people that are in the nightlife, into nightlife that is, they're gonna recognize that name for sure. But right now we are walking over to where the tennis courts are and checking those things out. Most of your non-water sports are gonna be in this section of the resort. You're gonna have your tennis, your pickleball, bocce ball, croquet, mini golf, which is an extra charge, unfortunately, and basketball. So first we're gonna check out the courts. The coolest thing about this is that they actually have every surface of court that's played. So they have hard court, which is your normal tennis court. They have clay, which is used a lot on the East Coast. And then they have grass even, which is used like for Wimbledon. So you want to try out different types of surfaces for tennis you have that here at Baja Mar which I think is really incredible 
I do believe that court fees are included in your resort fee if you are staying here on property, but of course lessons and clinics and that sort of thing are gonna be an extra charge. So here's a look at the hard court there. Then we're gonna walk by the tennis pro shop, which looked really nice. This whole facility, as you can tell, all manicured, cool hedges separating the courts, really felt like, like a mini Wimbledon in the tropics. Here's a look at the clay courts and then heading over to the bocce ball facilities. Pretty fun there to play with a family. I love bocce ball. Mini Blue, which wasn't operating completely when I was walking by early in the morning, but this is going to be about $20 a person to play, which I do think just should be included in the resort fee if you're paying this much already. I will say that the mini golf looked really nice. It looked like a miniature version of a real golf course, kind of unique, kind of reminded me of Fantasia Gardens over at Walt Disney World. They had real sand traps, they had some water, pretty fun stuff for the family for sure. So definitely worth doing, I think, if you arrive on property. Then I believe this is where badminton would be played if the net was set up. One more look at the tennis facilities before we depart and head over and explore a little bit more of the resort. So right now I'm on the front side of the resort. This is opposite the beach. We're gonna walk from the tennis courts along this really handy pathway that's obviously amazing at night with the fountain show and head over to where kind of the convention facilities are just to show you those. Nice little events lawn for big weddings. So there are some big conferences that come here to Baja Mar now. So they've that all set up, it's outside of the casino. It's in its own building. So you'll see a lot of people in suits walking around. We can take these escalators up back to the casino floor and explore a little bit more of the casino. On the bridge walking into the casino, you can see where we're heading in a little bit. That's Baja Bay, the exclusive water park to Baja Mar. They built this in the last couple of years. Pretty fantastic looking place. I'm excited to try it out. So this is the SLS side of the resort. This is Cafe Madeline. This is an all day sort of coffee, breakfast place, brunch place, nice place with some outdoor seating. You can definitely tell the Vegas influence here walking into the casino floor. This whole hallway is going to be where your high-end shops are for sure. As we make our way out of this hallway, we're going to make our way to the casino floor, kind of make a full circle around that, go explore the Rosewood lobby which is the fancy resort, as I mentioned, on property. And then finally make our way over to the gym and then the pool complexes.
just taking a look, yeah. Now we're going to make our way over to the Rosewood side of the property. This is going to be a lot quieter, a lot more exclusive. Kind of feels like a boutique hotel. Very quiet. Rather than the Grand Hyatt and the SLS, which are very high energy, lots of people around, big open spaces. Rosewood's designed to feel very intimate, like you're the only one staying here in this private Bahamian guest home. Returning to the Grand Hyatt, we're going to check out a few more of their restaurants. To the left is Sticks, which is a noodle bar. And then to the right is going to be the entrance downstairs to Regatta, which is the main buffet restaurant at the resort. This is where you're going to get your globalist breakfast if you're a World of Hyatt member. Of course, there is a Starbucks coffee. There's several Starbucks around the property, so you can definitely get your Starbucks fix here at Baja Mar. But let's head down the escalator check out Regatta inside of the pizza lab and the bond nightclub area that we walked past earlier in the video is towards the outside of the section Getting back upstairs, I found myself on the reserve, which is a separate section of the Grand Hyatt. This is going to have a separate check-in. It's going to have butler service. It's going to have a lounge, as well as some poolside villas to use during your stay. But I took the elevator from the reserve up to the spa and fitness center level. This is all connected no matter where you're staying at uh, the Grand Hyatt, either tower, you're going to be able to get to this level. Love the outdoor walk to the fitness center. It's pretty cool. Then this is branded Espa, I think is how you pronounce it. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But this is your fitness center and your spa area. Obviously very high end. Lots of people here looking to do some spa treatments. A little cameo of myself in the mirrored sign there. Walking down to the fitness center. Definitely notice the artwork as you walk into the fitness center. And this place is pretty big and pretty cool. So big room with all of your standard exercise equipment. On the balconies there, they actually had bikes that you could look at the ocean and do your little cycle. Weren't Pelotons by any means, but uh, you could definitely uh, get that done, which is pretty cool. There's even an outdoor yoga lawn and places to do some more, you know, sprints outside on some turf. Pretty awesome there, and it's got a great view of the resort around. And so now let's move down to the poolside areas and check out all the pools that there are here at Bahamar. Walking down from the gym, I did notice that I walked by Tortoise K, which is going to be my first annual experience that I came across here besides the check-in aquarium. This pool is called Drift. This is going to be a family pool. It's got lots of cabanas to rent near it. Pretty nice looking spot. I love the palm trees that are kind of interlaced into the pool. This is the first of many pools that we're about to see. They also have the Drift Bar and Grill, so you're going to get your food, your drinks, etc. right there at the pool. Now, if you're an adult or you're a couple on this trip and you're looking to avoid families and kids, right next to this pool is Elixir, which is a little bit more upscale experience. There's no extra cost to this, but of course they do have cabanas to rent. The smaller pool, but with these awesome sun loungers right there in the middle. Very upscale feeling, and of course there is the Elixir Bar right there to grab your cocktails. Next to Elixir is the Fortune Pool, which has an awesome hot tub right at the end there. And the Reflection Pool for the resort is right above that with that cool waterfall. Right next to the Fortune Pool is the event lawn for the resort. So you're going to see a lot of corporate events here, maybe some gigantic weddings, that sort of thing. Ooh. 
And then next, the event lawn is Nexus, which is a private club within the resort. It's in between the Grand Hyatt and the Rosewood sections of the resort. We're making our way towards the beach, so we're gonna check all of that out. The Palms restaurant is right up ahead. That's gonna have light and breezy dishes. And then beyond that is probably the coolest animal exhibit at the resort. This is Flamingo K. I gotta say, these are 10 out of 10 flamingos. These are the most pink flamingos I've ever seen. Big selling point of the resort for sure, used in all of the marketing, big part of Bahamian culture too. So definitely check these out. You can you even do yoga with them in the morning for an extra fee or meet them for an extra fee. Beyond that is an Airstream called Nosh, which is vegetarian and kosher dishes. Pretty cool too. And we finally made it to the sand of Baja Mar. To the right is the entrance to the Rosewood section of the resort, so that's all private. But to the left is open to all guests, including Grand Hyatt Baja Mar guests like myself. So with your resort fee, you get free beach chairs and umbrellas, that sort of thing. You also get free non-motorized water sports, so your paddle boards, your kayaks, snorkeling, that sort of thing. That's all included here. Nice looking beach. Uh, I kind of thought it would probably be a little bit bigger just given the size of the resort. Atlantis has a pretty big stretch of beach, uh, but really nice, really well kept, beautiful white sand, great blue water, as you can see. So no complaints from me there. One thing I thought the resort did a very good job of was putting a lot of bars and restaurants in these airstreams near the beach because that's where a lot of people are going to congregate during the day rather than have a bunch of sit-down restaurants that take a while to grab food. So you have Blue Mojito, which serves drinks over there, and then you have Yard or Street Bird, which is going to be your rotisserie chicken place, and then El Jefe, which has your tacos from Mexico. Then you have the Out Island Bar to the left, that's that brick and mortar bar right there that has all of your pool cocktails. That's right next to the Out Island Pool, which is right next to the coolest pool, most unique pool for sure in the whole resort, and that's going to be Dean's Blue Hole. So Dean's Blue Hole has cliff diving or cliff jumping, they don't really let you dive, but cliff jumping, a huge waterfall, and behind that waterfall is a hidden aquarium that you can go hang out at in the pool, watch some turtles and sharks. Really cool pool and a big reason why people come here to Baja Mar. You see a kid jumping on the left there off of the cliffs. I thought the rock work was as good as I've seen any themed entertainment company do things like Disney. Looked really like coral. You know, there's no mountains and no big coral buildups in the Bahamas. Pretty cool stuff. If I were to have one complaint, I feel like the tanks could have been a little bit better kept, a little clearer. It seems like they were maybe sandy or dirty, kicked up. Felt like uh, maybe he would have had a better view inside if that was the case. We're going to keep walking over to Baja Bay. But to the left here is the sanctuary. This is going to be where you can do a lot of animal experiences. This is also not included in your resort fee. This is an extra charge. I think it's about $20 per person to go walk through there. It's going to be near where you can grab excursions for the day from the pier as well as your non-motorized water sports. So overall, I think this 
animal experience should probably be included in the resort fee with how much people are paying here at the resort, but that's just my opinion. Really pretty area though, and a good transition between the beaches and the pools of the Baja Mar to Baja Bay, which is a full-blown water park. You also have a few restaurants around here that are kind of grab and go. You got Scoops Ice Cream that was closed when I was walking by. You got Dax, which serves your classic frozen drinks, daiquiris, and then Da Poke Bowl, which has poke bowls, which is great beach side food for sure. Moving on towards Baja Bay a little bit more, you got Marcus and Marcus on top. This is going to have your classic sunset views. It's going to be open for lunch and dinner. A little bit more of a fine dining experience than the trailers that are existing on the beach. So keep that in mind if you are here on property and want a nice sunset drink, this is going to be your place. And finally, a short walk away from that is Baja Bay. So this is the resort entrance for Baja Bay. I just use my room key on my wrist to buzz in and I'm let in. All included in the resort fees, that's a great benefit for sure. If you are coming in off of one of the cruise ships, you can get access to Baja Bay with a day pass. It's about $135 to $150 depending on your cruise, so do keep that in mind. There are upcharge experiences within Baja Bay. This is called the Beach Club. This has your classic, amazing looking infinity pools overlooking the beach and the ocean. You have cabanas for rent and you have some fancier lounge chairs. So this is a more upscale experience. You still have full access to the water park though. There also is a restaurant here in the Beach Club. It's called 25 Degrees North. This is going to be your Southern Californian fare. Now let's actually enter Baja Bay, check out all the attractions and food options, all the things that you can do during a day here at Baja Bay. You spend all day here for sure. Over to the right is gonna be called the river. This is gonna be your action river. This is a, not really a traditional lazy river. They actually have one of these over at Atlantis. I actually think the one at Atlantis is a little bit better, but this goes around most of the water park. You can do circles in this all day, and there's some big waves that come on occasion that push you along. This is going to be the first of several shopping and dining areas. They have Barracuda Bar and Restaurant, which has kind of your traditional burgers, etc. Some cocktails, that sort of thing. You actually have a sugar factory, which I thought was pretty cool. So that's branded. Lots of branded restaurants here in Baja Bay, which is cool. And then probably the most unique thing I thought was a vineyard vine store. So probably the coolest vineyard vines store location on earth.
If you have little ones, Stingray Cove is up ahead. You're going to be spending a lot of time here. This has all the little kid slides, all the water dumping stations, water guns, that sort of thing. Really, really cool look to this place and just it's going to be really fun for the kids. Beach chairs are free at Baja Bay, but you do have these upcharge cabanas that are awesome for families or big groups. Just to have a little bit of extra space while here at Baja Bay. In terms of water slide towers, there's three main water slide towers for the older kids and the adults. Up ahead, you have the family tube slide and hammerhead, which is kind of a half pipe like slide. Pretty fun there for sure. These lines felt like they weren't that long when the park opened at 10 a.m. Started to get a little bit longer in the middle of the day, and I feel like probably towards the end of the park day, they're going to dwindle down a little bit more. And then over to the left is another food area, which has Cleo, which has Mediterranean style food, and then Sam's chicken. So that's going to have your burgers and chicken sandwiches, that sort of thing. And then a tequila bar as well. Next to that tower is the dueling riptide water coaster. So these are two mirror image water slides that go uphill and pretty fun stuff there so you can race your family. And then what's probably the signature section of the park, it's going to be the Baja Bay Lagoon with the Devil's Backbone and Thunderball water slides above it. These are the tallest water slides in the park, the most intense for sure. We're going to hike up and check out what it looks like from the top view there. To get up there, you have to cross this cool rope bridge. So this is definitely the coolest section of the park for me. It felt like a sort of a Typhoon Lagoon type of feel, like a Disney World really cool stuff from Baja Mar here. And this is all included in your nightly fee at the resort. So that's pretty awesome for sure. It's uh, Osmo Pocket 3. shot. <laughs> One area I loved was around Pirate's Plunge, this tower right here, two water slides that actually spit you out above the water so you have a sort of drop after you get launched out of these water slides pretty fun and it's right next to the surf which is the park's flow rider and one of the bigger flow riders that i've seen but of course right next to all of this is the pavilion which is actually a casino within the park because this is a casino resort This is all Turtle Beach. This area was 
closed for some reason when I walked by, but another small little kid area in addition to Stingray Cove. Exiting Baja Bay and heading back up to the resort, I noticed the SLS's pool, which was cool and kind of swanky looking. So that's an option for you. I believe that this is technically exclusive to the SLS, but I might be wrong. Didn't get a chance to take a dip. And then this is the SLS's lobby area. It all kind of flows together. It's really hard to discern whether you're on the SLS side or the Grand Hyatt side, though you definitely know that you are on the Rosewood side just because of how quiet it is. All right, so first impressions of Baja Mar, the Grand Hyatt. Number one, this place is absolutely gigantic. It's as big of a resort as I've ever seen. I think Atlantis might be a little bit bigger, but walked around the whole place, checked out everything there was to do. You got tennis courts, multi-surface tennis courts. You got croquet, bocce ball, a whole mini golf course that's modeled after a real golf course, their real golf cor course, which is pretty cool. I would say not the most expansive beach. Kind of expected more of a beach. I mean, the beach is nice, but it's not as like large as I would expect for a resort this big. But yeah, pools themselves, all really nice and pretty. Um, a lot of people at this resort, I think it's pretty busy right now. So uh, there were some chairs, uh, but if you wanted something that was like close to a pool, I think it was gonna be kind of hard to get. A lot of families here, very family centric resort. Um, casino didn't look like it was getting much action, but I was walking around there kind of earlier in the morning. So I'm sure at night it picks up a lot. Food wise, uh, you know, it's Bahamas. So things are crazy expensive. You have the service charge and taxes on top of everything. So my burger with no fries and a beer ended up being $33 after taxes and tip and everything. So um, pretty expensive uh, here. If I was staying here for the whole week, I would probably not love my bill. Um, as a globalist, I do get free breakfast, which is definitely helpful. Um, Regatta is the restaurant that they serve that at. They closed their grand club during COVID, and I don't know if that's ever going to reopen. Um, the buffet just looked absolutely packed, looked like a long line to get in there and get a table. So take that for what you will, probably would prefer the Grand Club for sure, especially because they used to have complimentary drinks and it overlooked the fountains, which was probably pretty nice. So that's a bummer for sure. Uh, right now as Globalist though, they do give me two free drinks that I can use on property, which is helpful. So um, overall, you know, I, I get an ocean view as a Globalist, uh, definitely like that. Um, they were selling sweets, but since I'm only here for one day and just kind of needed a room quickly, I didn't really push to try and get a suite. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes they don't assign me a suite if one was for sale and that's what you're kind of entitled to as a globalist. So I just always ask politely if they are in fact, uh, still selling the suite and if, uh, I could maybe stay in there. So, and now to round out this video, let's check out a little bit of what the Rosewood looks like the more tranquil and more expensive side of the resort. 